Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everybody this is dr vishal trivedi from department of biosciences and bioengineering iit guwahati and what we were discussing we were discussing about the isolation as well as the purification of the over expressed product from the cells or the host in this context so far we have discussed about the two properties of the protein which can be exploited in two different techniques in one of the uh, as lectures we have discussed about how you can exploit the presence of charge on the protein and in the techniques called ion exchange chromatography and in the next lecture we have discussion about the presence of hydrophobic patches present on the protein surfaces and how that can be exploited to purify the protein using the hydrophobic interaction chromatography. Now let us move on to the third property and the third property is that the proteins are having the surface area or the uh, uh, surface area which can be utilized to purify as well as to characterize a particular protein and the technique which is related to the surface area is known as the gel filtration chromatography. Now before going into the details of the gel filtration chromatography, let us discuss how we can exploit the surface area of a protein to characterize uh, uh, the particular protein as well as how that can be used to purify the different proteins from a complex mixture. So now you can imagine that proteins are nothing but the made up of a peptide chain which, which is uh, made up of, of different amino acid residues. So initially when they are being synthesized from the ribosome, they are being synthesized in the linear chain and that linear chain form is called as the extended form. So when they are being synthesized from the ribosome, they are synthesized in the extended form. As soon as the chain is coming out from the ribosome, it is actually based on the micro environment, then it starts folding uh, by the interaction between the residues like if the residue is present here, it can make an interaction with the neighboring residue and so on and ultimately it, you are going to have the partially folded protein and then that partially folded protein is going to be get converted into the fully folded protein and what you can see in a fully folded protein that the hydrophobic patches are going to be present in the center whereas the hydrophilic patches, uh, hydrophilic molecules are going to be present on the surface and by doing this whole process what protein is trying to do is it trying to conserve the free energy and it is trying to reduce the surface area and because of that it is actually trying to make the structure as compact as possible that you can understand by this diagram. So if you see a protein from the top what you will see that there is a center around this center the proteins are arranging its amino acid residues and as a result the protein is going to form a globular uh, structure and in this process what it does and how this actually arranged the amino acid is based on the environment which is present outside which means the local environment if you have uh, and most of the cases uh, the environment like the pH, the salt and all other factors which are present in the micro environment are actually going to induce or it is going to affect the packaging of these protein molecules in such a way but at the end it is going to arrange along with the center and that is why if you would like to uh, characterize a protein you can actually characterize simply by knowing the radius of gyration or the diameter of that particular ball. And what you can see in a fully folded protein that the 
the protein will arrange the hydrophobic molecules in the center and the hydrophilic molecule around it and that is required because uh, the microenvironment in most of the protein cases is hydrophilic in nature which was which means that you have a water outside and because of that all the polar as well as the charge residues are being arranged outside and all the hydrophobic amino acids which does not like the uh, water or the aqueous environment are getting focused into the center of the protein. And by doing this process of folding a protein around a particular center, the protein is trying to conserve the energy as well as it is trying to reduce or uh, make the structure as compact as possible. And in this process what happen is most of the globular protein uh, are making the ball like structures and, are, uh, and if you compare these balls, you could be able to characterize these proteins as well as you could be able to purify. Let us understand this in a more elaborated example. So now, we have synthesized a protein and uh, what you see here is I have given an example of the protein which are of different molecular weight. So, it, it starts from the 5 kilo Dalton, 15 kilo Dalton, 35 kilo Dalton, 65 kilo Dalton and 95 kilo Dalton. What I have done is I have shown you the number of amino acid residues which are associated with most of these proteins. So, what you see is for the 5 kDa protein you have the number of residues which are 45. For 15 kDa it is 135 and 35 it is 315 and so on and these are the rough estimates and now based on this number of residues I have also calculated the size of these uh, or, ra or radius of gyration of these uh, proteins. So what you see is that the protein which is of the 5 kilo Dalton is having a radius of gyration of 2.545 nanometer. Whereas, in the case of 15 uh, kilo Dalton, it is a uh, 3.53 and 4.69. So, what you see here is that as you are increasing the size of the uh, protein, it actually increasing its radius of gyration, which means as you go from a smaller protein to a larger protein and all this is applicable only for the globular protein that the diameter of that particular ball is increasing, which means if you consider that the, the only the globular proteins are present in a complex mixture, uh, you are actually having nothing but a combination of different balls of different sizes, which means you have a, a protein of different sizes or different balls are present in the micro environment and all these balls can be separated simply by reducing or simply by filtering these protein particles through a different four sizes, which means if you uh, in a in a general in a general term what you can do is if you want to if you want to separate a protein of 5 kilo dalton from the 65 kilo dalton so you can see that 65 kilo dalton is of this diameter compared to the 5 kilo dalton which is of this diameter and if you have a mixture of this protein and this protein what you can do is you can simply keep take the filters of two different diameter, the diameter which is corresponding to the 5.77 nanometer and the diameter which is corresponding to the 2.45 nanometer and if you use these two uh, filters and if you filter this protein and this protein, what will happen is these two proteins are going to be separated from each other and this is what exactly the gel filtration is going to do. It is actually having uh, the funnels of different pore sizes and uh, based on that it is actually filtering these molecules. So, in a, in a typical gel filtration what you have is you have the beads which are having the large pore size, you have the beads which are of smaller pore size and in general when you put the molecules through this, the large size molecules are going to be excluded whereas the small molecules are going to be included. This is actually exactly the reverse. In most of the cases when you are doing a filtration, the small molecules are getting passed through to through the diameter whereas the larger molecules are going to be retained. Whereas in the case of gel filtration chromatography, you are actually going to exclude 
the larger molecules and you are going to retain the smaller molecule into those pores. That is why the gel filtration chromatography is also called as the reverse sieving uh, techniques or it, it does not follow the filtration principle. In the filtration, normal filtration principle what you have is suppose I am using a filter of 10 nanometer. So, what that mean is that the particles which are lower to this are going to be filtered out whereas, the particles which are of larger size to this are going to be retained onto the filter. Whereas, in this case if you have a bead of 10 nanometer which means you are going to exclude or you are going to reject all the molecules which are actually of larger size to 10 nanometer whereas, you are going to retain all the molecules which are of the lower size. That is why the gel filtration chromatography actually follows the reverse principle of sewing. Now, let us understand how the gel filtration chromatography rack. So, in this particular chromatography the column is packed with the beads containing the pores of different sizes and that actually is uh, going to resolve or going to allow the entry of molecule based on their sizes. So, you can imagine that you have injected the uh, a complex mixture of the uh, protein molecules which are of different diameters of like orange, green, uh, red and so on. So, all these molecules are going to distribute within these beads and once they distribute within these beads because these beads are not the normal beads they are these beads are going to have the pores. So, they will actually going to distribute between the the space which is present inside the pore and the space which is present outside the pore. So, if the molecule is of a smaller diameter it will get filled into those pores whereas, the molecule which is of larger size is going to be excluded from these pores. Uh, so, a smallest size in the inner part of the pore followed by the gradually increasing size and the largest molecule excluded from entering into the gel. This means, here also the molecules are going to be distributed from the outside buffer into the, 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 the buffer which is present inside the pores. So, it will be get exchanged with the buffer which is present inside the pores and the smallest molecule is going to sit at the bottom of the pore whereas, the larger molecules or more larger molecules are going to sit on top of these small molecules. And the largest molecule which will not enter into the pore is going to be excluded from these pores and that will remain into the buffer phase. The separation between the molecule occurs due to the time they travel to come out from the pore. When the mobile phase passes through the column, it takes protein along with the smaller molecule present in the inner part of the gel takes longer time to come out and travel longer path to come out whereas, the larger molecule travel less distance to come out. As a result, large molecule and a small molecule get separated from each other. Now, let us understand. So, what is the kind of pore is present and how the separation is occurring in a gel filtration chromatography. So, if I show you a pore, this is the gel filtration bead okay, and the pore is present in a funnel shaped pore which is present on these beads. So, you can imagine that you have a funnel shaped beads which has a pore like this from all the sides. Okay. Now, what will happen is while the molecules are flowing on top of these beads, they will going to enter, they will going to replace the buffer what you are filling into these beads and they are going to fill. So, the smallest molecule are going to sit onto the bottom of these beads whereas, the molecule which is larger to this is going to sit on top of this. and the molecule larger to this is going to sit on top of this and the largest molecule is going to sit on top of this and the molecule which is even larger to this is not going to enter into the pore and it will go away along with the buffers. Now, this is the situation when you have initially injected the molecule and they are actually passing through the different layers. So, this kind of distribution is going to occur from the first layer 
to the last layer of the column which means the first layer is going to have the smallest bits, the smallest objects. The second layer is going to have the, the objects which are larger to this and the third layer is going to have the objects larger to this. So, if you understand or if you have a confusion that the every bead is going to have the molecules of these uh, molecules in arranged in a pores, then that is not true because the dynamics of these molecules are very different because of their sizes the dynamics of the small molecule is going to be very large that is why when the molecules are going to be distributed from the buffer which is filled within the pore versus the aqueous environment which is present outside the in the first layer when that distribution occurs the objects are going to be filled at the bottom of the pore and by the time the next molecule will try to fill into the same pore where the already existing molecules are present, it will get over and flow by the liquid and then it will be getting exchanged into the next layer and in the next layer it is going to sit like this and then the third layer it is going to have this and ultimately the last layer is where the molecules are going to be excluded because they will not enter and that is why they will come out from the aqueous phase and they will going to come out in the uh, from the column and they will be elute, they will be present in the flow through. So, that exchange occurs at every layer and as a result the throughout the column you are going to have the molecules filled within these beads and that is why you can imagine that this molecule is has to travel all the way which this molecule which is filled in the first layer has to filled all has to travel all the way from first of the column to the last of the column and that is why the smaller molecules are going to travel larger distances or larger volume whereas the larger molecule which are being present within the beads uh, which are very far away from the smaller object will going to travel smaller distances and that is why the large molecules comes first and the small molecule comes later and the largest molecule which will not enter into the beads are probably present somewhere here and that is why they will come out very early on and they may come out uh, within the wide volume. Now, suppose uh, you are uh, preparing a column and the total volume of the gel what you have used is called Vt then the Vt which is the total volume of the column is uh, equivalent to the Vg plus Vi plus Vo. What is mean by the Vg is the volume of the gel matrix which means the volume of these beads. Vi is the pore volume which means the, the volume of these pores which you are going to which, which is going to be taking part into the exchange and Vo is the void volume which is actually the volume which is being excluded. So, void volume means the volume which is being avoided by the uh, molecules and which will not take parts into the exchange or the distribution uh, phenomena. The volume of the mobile phase flow to elute a call uh, elute uh, 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 a substance from a column is known as the elution volume or the VE. The elution volume is related to the void volume and the distribution coefficient Kd. So, the elution volume Ve is equivalent to Vo plus Kd Vi. Okay. So, if you re rearrange the Kd is equivalent to Ve minus Vo by Vi. So, that is the formula for Kd. Okay. So, Kd is the ratio of inner volume available for an analyte is the independent to the column geometry or the length as per the relationship three different types of analytes are possible in a gel filtration column. Now, imagine that you have an analyte which has the Kd is equivalent to 0. Kd is 0. If the Kd is 0, if you put the 0, okay, then what will happen is that uh, Ve minus Vo divided by Vi so, if you do it that if you redo the rearrangement what you will see is that V e is equivalent to uh, V o which means 
that VE is equivalent to VO means these analytes will be completely excluded from the column. So, if the KD is 0, which means the molecule is not entering into the pores of these beads and is because of that the VI is going to be 0 and as a result the VE is going to be equivalent to VO which is wide volume. Now, you can imagine that you have an analyte which is having the KD is equivalent to 1. So, if the KD is 1, then it is VE minus VO divided by uh, VI and if it is VE, so VE is equivalent to VI plus VO, okay, which means the VE is equivalent to VO plus VI, which means these analytes will be completely in the pore of the beads, which means if you see the beads, the molecule which are sitting at the innermost area of the beads, at the innermost of the area of the beads is going to give you a KD value which is 1. Now, if you have a KD value where which is actually the KD is, the KD is bigger than 1, which means now, you can imagine that if the KD is bigger than this, if the KD is bigger than 1, that what that mean is that the VE is going to be bigger than VI plus VO, okay, which means in those cases the K, v, v, uh, and in what conditions the VE is going to be bigger than VI plus VO under only one condition that the K, the molecule which you are resolving is irreversibly binding to the beads. So, one of the thing which you have to consider while you are doing the gel filtration is that while you are doing the gel filtration, the molecules are only getting exchange between the pores versus out, outside area. They are not uh, getting associated with the, the, with the beads either uh, by the non-coordinate bonds or the coordinate bonds or any kind of interaction, which means if you even if your protein has a charge, the beads are not going to have the association with these molecules because there is a charge present. So, that is why most of the beads what people use in the gel filtration does not have any kind of affinity or any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of uh, preferences or any kind of association with the molecules. But if the molecule is going to show you the KD which is bigger than 1, which means the molecule has irreversibly been bound to these beads and in those cases you can flow the liquids, but the molecule will not going to come out, which means what I am saying is if the molecule will go and bind to the one of the pores, then even if you flow the liquids because we are not going to do any salt gradient or any kind of such kind of treatment, that is why the molecule will remain stuck to these beads and it will not come out. So, that is why it, if the KD is bigger than 1 in this situation analyte will absorbed onto the column matrix and if that happens then you have to wash this column, you have to strip this particular molecule from the beads and then you have to repack which means if that happens you have to repack the column and it is going to destroy the column packing. So, this is what I, we are talking about if you resolve the molecules of different sizes, if you inject the molecule what you will see is the large size molecule will come out first, the medium size molecule will come out later and the small size molecule or the smallest size of molecule will come later, which means the elution volume for the large is going to be very small, the elution volume for the medium is going to be in between and the elution volume for the smallest one is going to be largest and that is simply because the large small molecule has to travel from all the way from the top of the column to the bottom, whereas the medium one has to travel the medium distance and the largest one has to travel the smallest distance. That is why they will come out on a uh, different volumes. Now, let us see uh, what are the metrics you can use for uh, gel filtration. The choice of column depends on the range of molecular weight and 
the pressure limit of the operating equipment. If you remember when we were discussing about the uh, protein purification system, we have discussed about the different types of pumps, what you can use. You can use the low pressure pumps, you can use middle pressure pump and you can use the high pressure pumps. Similarly, you can also use the molecular weight. So, the, so it, you should always know what molecular weight is my target molecule. So, that is why you can use the gel filtration chromatography matrix based on the pressure limit which are which which will pressure limit which you are going to use and as well as the molecular weight range which you are going to uh, resolve. For example, if you use the Cephadex G10, the G10 is a matrix which actually can fractionate from uh, small molecule to 700 Dalton. Whereas, in the case of Cephadex GT100, so you can see that it actually can resolve from 4 kDa to 150 kDa. So, what is mean by the fractionation range? The fractionation range means this molecule will be the largest size which this column can, uh, uh, can resolve and this is the smallest molecule which is this molecule is can resolve. So, that is what is the fraction that decides the fractionation range which means within this fractionation range the malic the column is going to have the better resolution and it is going to fractionate the different molecules. But if you take the molecules which are larger to this for example, if you take a molecule of uh, 180 kilo Dalton that does not mean that 180 kilo Dalton will not going to be resolved. But if you see a, a separation between 150 versus 180, these two molecules will come together compared to if you are resolving the 120 and 150. The difference between 120 and 150 is also 30 kilo Dalton, the difference between 150 and 180 is also 30 kilo Dalton, but it's because the column has a fractionation range between the 4 kDa to 150 kDa, it will going to resolve 120 kDa to 150 kDa better compared to the from 150 kDa to 180 kDa because the pore size will not allow the 180 kDa to be resolved uh, from the 150 kDa. So, it, it the both molecule will sit on top of each other and when, when you elute they both are going to come together. Uh, now, let us see how to uh, do the operation of the gel filtration chromatography. So, one of the crucial parameter of the gel filtration chromatography is that the column packing. So, the first event is that you have to do a column packing. So, in the column packing of a gel filtration chromatography, you have to be very, very careful. For example, the, the, the column material what you are going to get from the companies are already are either be present in a uh, liquid phase or they will probably give you the column in a powder. So, if you are getting a column in the form of powder, then the this powder has to be put it into the buffer and then you have to put it in these buffers uh, into the buffer so that the column will get swell and so, if the column will get swell, it actually going to increase its volume and that is how you have to use this particular column. If it is present in the liquid form, then mostly the column material is always been stored in 20 percent alcohol containing the 0.2 percent azide. In those cases, then you have to do at least 3 to 4 time buffer exchange so that there will be no buff alcohol present in that column. Now, once your beads are ready, either they are being swollen from the powder or you have already got the swollen beads from the companies and you have washed and prepared it. You have to allow the column material to settle down in a mobile phase. So, mostly you have a, a glass column which actually has a filter at the bottom and you have a plunger which you can use to uh, pack the column. So, through this plunger you are going to pour the material. So, it is going to pour into the glass tube and allow the beads to settle without trapping the air within the column. So, while, while you are settling down you are also going to flow the water or flow the buffer through a pump. So, you can use the peristatic pump or you can use the, uh, the, the pump which are present in the protein purification system. Now, you 
suppose so what will be the relationship between the column packaging uh, flow rate versus the flow rate at which you can operate this column now suppose i am i am packing this column at 5 ml per minute okay now if i am packaging this column at 5 ml per minute uh, the recommended the rec it is recommended that you should not use this column beyond 1 ml per minute why it is so because if you run it beyond 1 ml per minute you probably going to affect the column packaging because if you remember the gel filtration is where the beads are arranged in the column and from the bead number layer number 1 the column the molecules are going to start fractionating in the bead number 2 the medium size molecules are going to fractionate and that's how so if you change the packaging if you change the amount of uh, the uh, uh, interspecial or interbead spaces you are going to either decrease or increase the number of layers and that actually is going to affect the overall fractionation of the molecules within that particular column the other thing is that you should always try to in uh, uh, avoid the bubble or any air bubble or any kind of air within the column and that is very important for uh, the chromatography of gel filtration that is very important if you would like to resolve the molecule on a gel filtration chromatography column now once the matrix is settled down to give a column it can be tested for air presence of air channels and well packing by a flowing uh, analyte with kd equal to 1 it is expected that the elution volume in this case should be vo equal to vi so now apart from the air bubble you also have another problem of air channels what is mean by air channel is suppose you have packed a column and it is continuous layer of beads from bottom to top and in between some layer you have a channel of air okay so what how the channel of air is going to disturb the overall purification what will happen is the as soon as the molecule will reach to this particular channel they are not going to fractionate from the pores to the aqueous environment because they have a free movement of within this channel so they will travel within this movement within this channel and they will not going to fractionate between the buffer what you are using versus the pores which are present on the beads and because of that they will going to mix up with the molecules which are already present in this particular layer and as a result the they will not going to follow the principle of gel filtration chromatography which means they are not going to be get uh, separated nicely and they will get mixed up with the other molecule and as a result it is overall it is going to affect the uh, the separation uh, or the resolution of this particular column now the question is how you can test that there is no air channels now if you would like to test that you have to pass through a material which is of kd equal to 1 and if you remember we have said that what is mean by kd equal to 1 is the molecule which is going to sit at the bottom of the that particular pore and that should take the amount of time which is actually equivalent to vo equal to vo plus vi which means it should travel all the way from the pores which is actually the vi versus it should travel all the way from the top to bottom what could this molecule could be okay the 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 simplest molecule could be the water molecule because water molecule is the simplest and the smallest molecule which can be present on the bottom of these pores but the problem with the water molecule is that water molecule you cannot monitor until it is radio labeled and we are not doing going to do a radio labeled experiments just simply by knowing whether there is a channel or whether there is a air bubble present in this column or not so to know this particular aspect you can use some molecule molecule which is of smallest in nature but it should be getting detectable one of such molecule is the acetone acetone is a organic molecule so its immiscibility within the water is less but it still can be a very very small molecules so the acetone will sit at the bottom of this particular well and acetone 
is compared to the water acetone absorbs uh, very uh, strongly at the 220 nanometer which is actually uh, uh, absorbance for the most of the aliphatic compounds the compound which contains the carbon carbon bonds and you can use uh, acetone so what you do is you layer the acetone so acetone will get filled at the bottom of this particular pore and then it will travel all the way so once the acetone comes it will give you a peak in 220 and by by knowing the peak you could be able to calculate the elution volume and if the elution volume is equivalent to the vi plus vo which means you will know that actually it the column does not have any channels column does not have the pores that does not mean that it is not going to develop the channel or the pores air bubbles that for that only the most of the gel filtration column has to be packed in the same temperature where you are planning to operate these columns which means if you change the temperature if you change the temperature of packaging from the uh, of running you know the temperature is going to make the expansion of the liquids or it is actually going to expand the air which is present within that particular liquid and if you change the temperature suppose you go from 4 degree to 37 degree then you are actually expanding the air which is present in the water in which your column is being packed and because of that that this particular expansion of this air which is a water soluble air is going to come out and it is actually going to create the channel as well as it is going to create the bubbles other than that if you would like to avoid the air bubbles or the channels you also have to use the water which is degassed what is mean by degassed is that you can reduce the amount of dissolved oxygen and by degassing you can do simply by putting that particular liquid into the vacuum or you can also do the sonication both are these processes are actually removing the oxygen from the water now once the packaging is over then you can load the column and you can prepare the sample in a in your mobile face so whatever the condition of your mobile face you can use and you have to ensure that it is free of suspended particles so that the column is not going to be clogged the most recommended method to apply the sample is to inject the sample with a syringe now once you are done you can do the elution so compared to the ion exchange chromatography or the hydrophobic interaction chromatography in gel filtration there is no gradient of salt to use to elude the sample from the column the flow of mobile phase is used to elude the molecule from the column once you are done with the elution you have to do a regeneration so regeneration after the analysis of the analyte gel filtration column is washed with the salt containing mobile phase to remove all non specifically adsorbed protein to the matrix the column is then equilibrated with the mobile phase to regenerate the column the column can be stored at 4 degree in the presence of 20% alcohol containing 0.05% sodium azide and just like as we discussed for the ion exchange chromatography or hydrophobic interaction chromatography the column is always been stored in 20% alcohol containing 0.05% azide so that you will not going to uh, see a growth of bacteria so with this i would like to conclude our lecture here thank you